All right, so in this particular discussion, we'll look at the microscopic or what you can also call the histological features of the kidney. So these are structures that we cannot see by our naked eyes. In the other discussion, we're looking at the gross anatomy of the kidneys. Now we are looking at the microscopic features. Needless to say, mainly the focus is on the nephron. So the nephron is also the structural and functional unit of the kidney. Therefore, whatever function we can attribute to the kidney is because of a structure found within the kidney known as the nephron. So roughly the kidney has about one to two million nephrons. Okay, and we said this number is attained around the second year of life. So babies or children who are younger than that, you find that the number of nephron is less as compared to adults. Okay. Now, all nephrons are connected to collecting ducts. So collecting ducts, we can call them as the end or the terminal ends of the nephron itself then the collecting ducts are connected to the minor calices. Minor calices are connected to the major calices, and the major calices are the ones that are connected to the renal pelvis. It is the renal pelvis that exits the, nef the kidney as a ureter. So in short, the fluid that is passing through the nephron will end up in the collecting ducts and finally end up in the ureters as urine. Okay, so let's look at that, the structure of a nephron. So nephron has the following parts. The Bowman's capsule, or what you can simply call the renal corpuscle. So renal corpuscle is composed of two things, the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. So glomerulus is simply a network of capillaries found inside the Bowman capsule. Then a Bowman capsule is an enclosure around the glomerulus. So those two structures form what we call renal corpuscle. So this structure here, Bowman capsule in yellow, and what is inside, which is a glomerulus. These two parts or structures make up a renal corpuscle. So this is a renal corpuscle. And in the preamble, I said all renal corpuscles are located in the renal cortex. So we don't find any renal corpuscle in the medulla. This structure can never be found in the medulla. Okay. So the other name of the renal corpuscle is a malphigian corpuscle. So malphigian corpuscle, renal corpuscle, is still talking about the same thing. It's simply glomerulus and Bowman capsule around it. And its location is in the renal cortex. Then the tube now that emanates from the renal corpuscle, which we call the renal tubule, is broken down into the following parts. The proximal convoluted tubule, the distal convoluted tubule, and the loop of Henle. Loop of Henle is this U-shaped part of the renal tubule. So loop of Henle will be located in both the cortex and the medulla. So this structure will go in the, in the medulla back into the cortex. <clears throat> then what we see is that when the afferent arterial comes to enter in the Bowman's capsule here, it leaves as an efferent arterial. So in terms of diameter or size, if you like, the afferent arterial is larger than the efferent. The efferent is smaller in size, and that way it causes pressure to build up in the renal corpuscle, and that forces some elements out of the capillaries into the Bowman's capsule, and we call that as glomerular filtrate. 
Now, as the efferent arterial leaves the glomerulus, it goes to wrap around the distal, the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule and forms what we call the peritubular capillaries. So both the proximal and the distal convoluted tubules have capillaries around them. Like we can see this blood vessel here. Similarly there, they are blood vessels. So we call those as peritubular capillaries. Then continues on again to form another network of capillaries around the loop of Henry. That network of capillary this time is called the vasa recta. So this is vasa recta. Then around the convoluted tubules is known as peritubular capillaries. So that is the first part of the reno of the of the nephron. Second part is proximal convoluted tubule. Third part is loop of Henle. Then third part distal convoluted tubule. Then finally the connecting tubule. So this is a connecting tubule now going to the collecting duct. Okay, this is collecting duct there, connecting tubule. So let's examine all these parts of the renal tubule one by one. So we'll start with the renal corpuscle. So I'm just trying to find a diagram that will be useful for this discussion. Okay, I'll go back a bit so that we can appreciate this structure, okay. So we are here now in the renal corpus or malphigian corpus. So first things first is that the renal corpus has two pores, okay? Two pores, a vascular pore and a renal pore. So vascular pore is the superior end. It can face either way anyway. So it is the end where the afferent arterial is entering in the Bowman's capsule and where the efferent arterial is exiting the Bowman's capsule. So you can see that already this is this looks smaller, which is the efferent arterial. That looks larger, which is the afferent arterials. Okay. There's a discussion that we have done on blood vessels. So I'll refer you to that to see how do we classify arteries? What is the difference between arterioles, met arterioles, and capillaries? So these are arterioles, the two of them. Then inside there, we have fenestrated capillaries. So these are capillaries, what we are seeing. And this is known as glomerulus. That is a glomerulus. So this pore is known as a vascular pore because of the blood vessels. Then the other end, which is opposite to the vascular pore, is known as a renal or tubular pore renal or tubular pore. This is the other end of the renal corpuscle where the renal tubule is starting from. So the renal tubule starts from there, the tubular pore, and then goes on to form proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, as well as the connecting tubule. So that's all, two pores, vascular and tubular pore. So the first part of the renal corpuscle that we are going to examine will be the Bowman's capsule, this outer covering here. That is a Bowman's capsule. Let's look at it in greater details. What is it made of? What is the anatomy of the Bowman's capsule? So Bowman's capsule is nothing but a membrane that is surrounding the renal corpuscle. So it is made up of two layers. There's a discussion we have done concerning the pericardium, also concerning the pleural membrane. Pericardium is a membrane around the heart. It has a visceral pericardium, which is the inner pericardium. It has a parietal pericardium, which is the outer pericardium. Same with the pleural membrane. This is a membrane found in the chest cavity. It has a parietal pleural, which is the outer covering. It has an inner covering, which is also known as a visceral pleural. So same thing applies to the Bowman's capsule. The inner lining of the Bowman's capsule is what we call the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. 
visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. Then the outer lining is what we call the parietal layer. So Bowman's capsule, we have two layers, visceral and parietal. So this is the same image that we are seeing here and taken now there. So this is the parietal, which is outer. Then what we find inside the, the Bowman's capsule is the gromerulus. So all those are capillaries. Now, on the outer layer of the capillaries, there's another layer of Bowman's capsule here surrounding the gromerulus, which we call now the visceral layer. So there's the layer here around the capillaries. We are calling it the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. Then there's this outer layer. You can see that those are flat cells with their flat nucleus. So both layers, the parietal layer and the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule are made up of simple squamous epithelium. So that is simple squamous epithelium. Even here, simple squamous epithelium. Then now the space remaining between the two, this space here, is known as the renal space. That is the renal space or capsular space. Capsular meaning Bowman's capsule. So there's this space between the parietal layer and the visceral layer. And what will be accumulating there now is glomerular filtrate. When small molecules are filtered from the capillaries, they will pass through the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule and accumulate in this layer here, known as the capsular space or the renal space. This space allows now the glomerular filtrate to go all the way towards the tubular pore and enter into the renal tubule. So this is glomerular filtrate, which is a product of plasma. Molecules are being filtered or transported out of blood vessels into the renal or capsular space, then enters the renal tubule for other processes to continue. So mainly that is all about the glomerulus, the Bowman's capsule, sorry. Bowman's capsule has two layers, parietal layer and visceral layer. In between the two is a capsular space or renal space where glomerular filtrate accumulates. You can see flat cells there also. That is the parietal layer. Then that is the renal capsular space. Then they have cells around these capillaries, which are flat also, forming the, vas the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. <clears throat> okay. So going forward, I would like also to explain the process of filtration. Okay. So what happens during, fil so filtration is the first process in urine formation. So this is a physiological part now. So what happens is blood is coming from the general circulation, goes to the kidneys via the renal arteries, then goes to each nephron and we are saying we are about we have about 1 million to 2 million nephrons so what is happening is blood is coming to each nephron via afferent arterial then enters into the glomerulus which is a network of capillaries now these capillaries have pores what we call fenestras or fenestration those pores are quite tiny and allow small molecules found in blood to pass through so when those molecules migrate or they are forced out of blood vessels into the capsular space, then glomerular filtration has occurred, which is a first process in urine formation. Without glomerular filtration, the urine formation is impeded. So this process must occur first in the renal corpus. Then other processes can follow. So... This process of forming a filtrate is not influenced by any energy form in the body. It is achieved by the sheer blood pressure that is generated inside the glomerulus. 
How is that blood pressure generated? Number one is the size of the afferent arterial. Number two is the size of the efferent arterial. So blood is coming here, going into the glomerulus, passing through these arteries. Now, blood has to come out on the other end here through the efferent arterial. Because the efferent arterial is small, you find that there will be build up of blood in these capillaries and more blood wants to come in. So that blood in the capillaries will be forced through the efferent arterial. Now that forcing nature creates a lot of pressure here because this vessel is smaller than that. Which is So the afferent arterial is larger than the efferent. So it creates a lot of pressure in here. Therefore, glomerular filtration is achieved by blood pressure within the glomerulus. And therefore, if an individual has been injured, maybe by road traffic accident, by someone being attacked, and this person has been bleeding for quite some time, and the volume of blood drops, you find that the blood pressure also drops in the glomerulus, and therefore glomerular filtration is reduced. Even urine output will be reduced in such a person. We see similar situation in patients who have dehydration. We also see the same thing in persons who have been exposed to severe bends, third degree bends. They've lost a lot of fluid and therefore pressure in the glomerulus drops. Filtration also reduces. Urine formation also reduces. So at that stage, that person cannot even produce urine in an event that you are dehydrated or a patient has severe third degree bends. That's all about the Bowman's capsule and the process of filtration. Now let's look at the glomerulus itself, which is a network of capillaries. So we discussed capillaries under blood vessels, but nevertheless, we can quickly recap here. So these are capillaries found in the glomerulus. They've just cut here so that we can see it in a magnified manner. This one is even better. So that's a capillary there within the glomerulus. Now, we all know that capillaries are single layered blood vessels. They only have tunica intima. Tunica media, tunica exter externa is absent. Now we're saying in addition to just having one layer of flat cells, which we call simple squamous epithelium or simply endothelium, these cells have pores, what we call fenestrations. These fenestrations allow movement of small molecules from blood into the capsular space. So specifically, the blood vessels found in the glomerulus, and the capillaries found in the glomerulus are fenestrated capillaries. Now, in addition to that, these cells have what we call podocytes. So within the Bowman's capsule, there are cells known as podocytes. This is a cell that we are seeing here. So it's likened to an octopus. An octopus has a central part or the body and tentacles, more like e extensions. That's how this cell also appears. So a podocyte has two processes, a primary process, which is this one, or those coming direct from the cell body. We call them primary source processes. So that's the body, and then these are the primary processes. Then primary processes will give us branches, small, small branches, more, many of them. We call those as secondary processes. So there's a primary process, and the secondary process. It is the secondary process which are also known as pedicles. Primary process, secondary process, or pedicle. Now, what happens is that these pedicles interlock each other like fingers, like you put your fingers like that. So that's what pedicles do. Pedicles interlock each other, then leave small, small spaces in between them. Those spaces are what we call the filtration slits. 
or filtration diaphragm, if you like. So whatever is leaving these blood vessels must negotiate first through the fenestrations found in the capillaries, then through the spaces left by the pedicles. And those spaces are known as filtration slits or filtration diaphragms. Okay. Now, we are going to add a, a further idea about the renal corpuscle. We have established that we have two layers of the Bowman's capsule, that is visceral and parietal. Then we have said the type of capillaries found within the glomerulus or forming the glomerulus are fenestrated capillaries. And these capillaries have pores. Then we see that all these capillaries are surrounded by podocytes. And podocytes now have a cell body and two processes. The larger ones being the primary processes, then the smaller ones being the secondary processes. And then the spaces left by the secondary processes are what we call the filtration slits. Now let's look at what we call the filtration barrier. Filtration barrier or simply the filtration membrane. So I'll use this structure here. So what we are seeing here is a blood vessel, which is cut there. So it's supposed to be circular in that fashion. Then these are the podocytes, podocyte, podocyte. Then this is a primary process of a podocyte. Then those smaller ones, are the primary, are the secondary processes or what we call the pedicles. Then spaces between the pedicles are the filtration slits. Now the filtration barrier or membrane is a membrane composed of three structures, which is shown here in this little box. So it is going to involve the capillary itself, the podocyte, and the basement membrane of the capillary, which is shown here. So I'll take it to a computer generated image, which is here, much better. So this is a simple squamous cell of the capillary, this one here, that is a nucleus. Now we're saying these cells have pores. You see those pores or fenestrations. Then all epithelium sit on a basement membrane. So we expect this simple squamous epithelium of the blood vessel to have a basement membrane, which is here now. That is a basement membrane. Then on the other side, we're saying all these blood vessels are surrounded by podocytes. Then the spaces left between the pedicles of the podocytes are the filtration slits. So these three structures form the filtration membrane, which is number one, the endothelium, which is shown here, fenestrated endothelium. Number two, basement membrane. Number three is the layer of the podocyte. These are processes from the podocytes. So from here to there, this is the thickness that molecules in this blood vessel, the capillary, should traverse through. So it should leave this capillary, cross through the fenestrations, cross the basement membrane, and cross through the filtration slits, and then accumulate in the capsular space, or renal space, as we are calling it. So we are talking about fluid or molecules now, leaving those blood vessels and accumulating here. So for the molecules to reach here, this capsular space, they would have passed through the filtration membrane, which is composed of those three structures we are just from discussing. So which molecules are filtered during glomerular filtrate? And we're saying this process is influenced by blood pressure within the glomerulus. So they include water molecules, glucose, amino acids, ions, urea, hormones, vitamin B and C, Ketones, ketones, these are byproducts of fat metabolism. 
and some very minute proteins can be found also, but mainly large proteins fail to pass through. For example, albumins will not cross because these pores are too small for them. Red blood cells equally cannot pass through. Platelets cannot pass through these pores. Waste is leukocytes because these are large cells. They can't pass through these pores. So this is what you expect to accumulate in the renal or capsular space. It is this molecule now, these molecules or substances, that will enter the renal tubule now. So they will enter the renal tubule here. So you see now that blood will flow out here, but out of blood, we have formed glomerular filtrate, which accumulates there and then goes into the renal tubule. So to pass now through the proximal convoluted tubule, it has to pass through the loop of Henle, it has to pass through the distal convoluted tubule and reach the collecting ducts. So this fluid here will be different from what is here. Because what is here is blood. There are blood cells, white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, and other substances found in blood. Waste products, hormones, drugs, and other issues will be here. Now, if I take you back to the filtrate, you see that filtrate is composed both of waste and useful elements to the body. For example, amino acids are useful to the body. Glucose is useful. Vitamins are useful. But for example, urea and ketones, these are not useful to the body. This is waste and the body needs to get rid of such. So since after filtration, even useful substances are filtered, these useful substances must be reabsorbed into the blood vessels. Whereas some of the waste material are not filtered. Maybe they are too large to pass through these pores. So they will still remain in blood. So they will still remain in blood and need to enter the renal space. I'm taking you back a bit so that we can connect these things. Blood that is flowing in the efferent arterial is different from blood that is here. Blood that is in the afferent arterial has not yet undergone filtration. But the blood that is in the efferent arterial has undergone filtration. That is difference number one. Next is that the blood that is in the efferent arterial, even though it has undergone, undergone filtration, it is still having some waste material. At the same time, it still has useful material. So what we need now is that all this waste material that is in the efferent arterial must find itself here in the renal tube. And that's when we see now that when the efferent arterial leaves the Bowman's capsule like that, it will come back here to circle around the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule and the loop of Henley which I earlier explained. And that way ensures that all the waste is lost and all the useful material is regained. I'll take you back yeah, to this one. So that is the renal capsule. Uh, this one is a bit confusing. There's a better one I saw earlier on. Okay, just bear with me. Uh, okay. Yeah, this one. This is a diagram I'm looking for. This one. So this is afferent. This is efferent. So what I was saying is when the efferent leaves the Bowman's capsule, it has to go closer to the proximal convoluted tubule and closer to the distal convoluted tubule. So the fluid that is here in the renal tubule and the blood that is here. Blood here has waste, still has waste. And useful material as well because the body needs the useful elements. Then the filtrate which is passing through this tubule has both useful and non-useful material. So 
the useful elements that were filtered here and is now flowing there has to go back to these blood vessels. Then whatever waste that was not filtered, which is still in blood, has to be transported into the renal tubule so that urine can be formed. So that's why we see that throughout the renal tubule, blood vessels are closed for that exchange to occur. And that process is now called selective reabsorption. So selective reabsorption takes place throughout the proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, and distal convoluted tubule. Selective reabsorption is occurring. What is happening during that time is glucose amino acid, which is here, will be transported back into blood. Then urea and other waste, for example, waste of drugs, hormones that have already been used, bilirubin, will have to leave this blood vessel and be transported into the renal tubule. Now, to achieve that, this time we don't need blood pressure. Instead, we need cellular energy known as adenosine triphosphate or simply ATP. ATP is needed for that process known as selective reabsorption, which is occurring throughout these parts. Okay. That said, now we're going to look at the other parts of the renal tubule, which is the proximal convoluted tubule, the distal convoluted tubule, and the loop of Henle. But for now, we can end here at the renal corpuscles. Okay. As usual, if there are any questions or clarifications, please get in touch with me. We can discuss.